Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When? With the voice of your childhood, Tony Schiavone. Tony, what's going on, man? How are you? Damn good. Damn good. How you doing? Man, better than I deserve. We are still both excited and kind of glowing from Sting's last match. Tony Khan called it the greatest AEW pay-per-view in history. I don't know if it was the very best one, but it felt the most special. It felt the most important man sting in his final match. What a display, what a performance, what a career for the man called sting. It's hard to believe it's really over. Isn't it something that you think about um, the, the career that was sting. And I'm thinking about when he first started. Now I was not there when he first started because, you know, he started out, I guess he started in Dallas, didn't he? That's right. Well, Memphis, uh, I guess. Okay. Memphis. Yeah. Right. And then they, of course the blade runners, but on a national level, yeah. Sting started on TBS and I was there for that and followed his career, obviously all the way through WCW with the exception of one year. And then I lead the business. Basically he leaves and he goes to the WWE for, uh, how long was he there? Uh, the just WWE. a cup of coffee. I mean, he, he wound up yeah. staying longer than that, but. He debuted, I guess, in uh, late 14 and then had that match in uh, 15 at WrestleMania. And which we've got, which we've called. Yeah. We've seen on our program. And of course, then he got hurt, and went to TNA and, uh, or he went to TNA and then he got hurt, but he got hurt and went to TNA. And so he and I got reunited with AEW thanks to uh, Tony Khan. And it was pretty damn good three years having to sting with us. Crazy three years having Sting with us. Crazy shit, man. What's going on? What's wrong with him? Doing all that stuff. Jumping through tables. Jumping through glass. Just crazy. But he ended up. And you know what? The people in Greensboro really responded to him. Yes. They really, really responded to the final match. And I'm very proud of that. Because Greensboro, you know, forever lives in, in my mind. Great entrance using his son's. Oh, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's just very, very well done. And, uh, finishes undefeated, uh, in AEW. And you know what? It was the way they did it, the way they, the way they, the finish was laid out. It, it was like sting comes back from everything, right? Yes. I was thinking it's like Superman put this on him and Sting rises up. Uh, hit him with the uh, EVP trigger. Sting still comes back. You know, it, it, he just came came back like a Superman from each and every move. It was a great send off. Very well booked. Very well done. Uh, shot you're seeing right now scared the shit out of me because I'm thinking, oh, glass is going to fly over and hit everybody. Yeah. Uh, but uh, apparently that didn't happen. Um, and um, I don't know who came up with the glass. Well, I can I, guess. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, uh, I saw Darby in the back afterwards, and he was really cut up. My boy, really cut up. Uh, and they were picking the glass. They were uh, giving him stitches, and he's laying there face first. And he says, "Hey, I'm okay. I don't even feel it. I'm okay." He said, "I thought I." The losing all that blood and everything that I would, uh, I would, you know, maybe go in the shock or, or something. He said, but I'm fine. I'm, I, and I look at him, of course, as I do and just shake my head. And, and as I do tell him he's out of his freaking mind. And then I tell him that's okay. Because, uh, when you climb Mount Everest, they'll, all those things will freeze. So you'll be fine, which he's doing next month. Um, he's, uh, as JR would say, a different kind of cat. I think that's fair to say. Yeah. But other than that, it was, I thought it was a great night on many levels, but obviously the end was pretty special with Sting. And I don't know if you saw, uh, we had footage out there that we put, I think it was on, I know it's on our YouTube channel of uh, what happened afterwards, after we went off the air. I don't know if you saw that or not. I did. I actually, um, was able to see it live, uh, through uh, a little hookup from a friend of ours and 
got to see the full speech and then him making his way around ringside for every fan yep. at ringside. It yep. was a special night. And I, for one, hope this becomes a new trend in professional wrestling where more of our legends and stars and our veterans, they get to sort of dictate their last match. You know, I, if the rumor in innuendo is true, Sting picked the date, Sting picked the opponents, Sting picked the match. And, uh, man, he deserved all that. And I'm, I'm, I for one, am glad that he got this last opportunity in wrestling to sort of close the chapter the way he felt it should be closed. I know we're going to get some tweets about it. So I just want to clean up something you said earlier. Sting was actually a part of WWE before he was a part of AEW, but even before the WWE run, that's where he had that really long TNA run. That TNA run was like 10 years in TNA or nine years, whatever it is. Um, so he was actually a part of TNA about as long as he was a part of WCW. If you can believe that. Wow. Well, I can. And again, that's during the years where I was not in wrestling. So I do not, I do not know the timeline. So if you're going to send us a tweet and try to correct us, I suggest you just go ahead and stick your finger up your own ass. Yeah. And I think last week when you and I were recording some bonus episodes, which are available now at patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. You were encouraging people to cut their penis off and stuff it in their own ear and provide what you called canal service Canal service, because that's the only thing, um, I can think of that is proper for trolls. Yeah. I mean, I think you went so far as to say, fuck what you heard. Right. Cut your wiener off and jam it in your own ear. And remember, so the bloody end is sticking out. Oh, who could forget the bloody end? Sticking yeah, yeah. out. Exactly. Well, we're going to be with uh, you to the bloody end because we are going to overdose on some sting today. We're going to watch not hey. one, not two, but three classic sting matches. And, uh, we're going to kick it old school. We're going to start in order. We've got one match from 89. We've got one match from 90 and we've got one match from 93. Now, how did we decide on these three? Well, we didn't, you did. We ran one poll on my Twitter at Hey, Hey, it's Conrad. We ran another poll on the WHW Monday Twitter, which is at WHW Monday. And we ran a third poll over on our YouTube. If you haven't already, check that out. It's WHW on YouTube.com. And these are the matches that you selected. Our very first one today, Tony, is going to be Great American Bash 1989. What a special show this was against the Great Muda. We cool. want you to watch along with us. So get that peacock out and go to season three of great American bash episode one. And then we want you to go to one hour, one minute and 45 seconds. That's one hour, one minute and 45 seconds of great American bash 89, which peacock is calling season three, episode one. I'm at one hour, one minute and 45 seconds. The great mood of man. He made a little post on social the other day and. You guys had lots of video footage, I guess you got from new Japan about sting and Muda as a kid, two guys in face paint like this. This was all I needed as a kid, man, you know, in the late eighties too, just to give context, this is a time where a lot of our dads are going down to the video store and they're renting ninja movies. And all of a sudden you've got a physical representation of that in the great Muda. This is a uh, pretty cool stuff for old school. Yeah, you know, in 89, uh, it was important to do something for the kids. I mean, well, let's get ourselves a goddamn candy man and let's put people in face paint. I got another idea. Let's have a hunchback, okay? And here's the deal about the hunchback. You can't pin him. <laughs> yeah, that was a challenging time I, to be on the WCW I really, team. I, I don't want to vary from what we're talking about here, but anytime we go back to that era, the first thing I think about is him. Mm. Oh. Well, let me get you to think about something else. Why don't we think about basketball season? Tournament play is here. Woo! About to be time to get down to the nitty gritty. Of course, we Woo! like to call this time of year March Madness. And if you're looking to have a little fun and support one of your teams, can we recommend that you use our special link, shopsportsmerch.com? That's where you need to go. 
shopsportsmerch.com. And what's cool about this is you get to do what you normally do over at fanatics. They got all your favorite players, all your favorite jerseys, all your favorite hats and literally everything caps, jackets, hoodies, whatever you would expect from fanatics. Now it's available at shopsportsmerch.com. We've done a license deal an affiliate partnership, if you will, with fanatics. So now you have access to the world's largest officially licensed fan gear collection, but it actually helps support our show. You can actually shop for all of your favorite throwback players or current players and teams at shopsportsmerch.com. If you're watching along with us on YouTube, we've got that QR code up on the screen now and even have a special link in today's episode. So let's look for the description and you'll see it right there. Shopsportsmerch.com. Be sure to pick something up, get you some swag just in time for basketball season. And it's a uh, nice way to support the show at shopsportsmerch.com. So man, I got it locked and loaded on my side. I'm pretty excited to see this sting and mood a match. Uh, I've got it preloaded here. Boy, forgive the noise, but I'm going to try and make sure that I'm ready. Oh, I'm ready. How about that? So I think at this time, it looks like we got to do like a special countdown. And I know once upon a time, you said that, that we weren't doing special countdowns anymore, but can we pretty please with cherry on top, do one more from DJ turnip? I think we can. Hell yeah. I, All right. He's in a good mood I, today, boys and girls. Yeah, yeah. I am in a good mood. Uh, talk to me on Wednesday, uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, a, I'm in a good mood now. So let's do a special countdown from DJ turn up. Let's do it. Not turn up. It's not turn up like the vegetable it's turn up. Here we are. The great Muda. Wait, is this Sting's entrance at WrestleMania 31? No. Oh. Yeah. Dude, what a fucking sick ass entrance that was, man. Wow. That theme is awesome. The big, uh, gong is awesome. Uh, Gary Hart is awesome. Just the swagger. I mean, and even Gary Michael Capetta and now for something totally different, check this out. You know what I just noticed this past week watching the show, Justin Roberts, instead of saying this is thing, he says that is Darby Allen. I thought that was cool. Wow. Yeah. I never noticed that until this week. Yeah, you're right. I, I never noticed that. That was the first time when you said it, I'm thinking, he uh, he says, this is sting, but for Darby, when he introduces him first, that is Darby. I was like, look there. That's pretty cool. And look at sting, man. This is, uh, maybe one of the first times in his career, we really started to see him invest in his presentation. 
you know, for a while there, Sting didn't have these sort of jackets and we know they're going to get more and more fancy and elaborate as we go. But this is widely regarded Tony as being one of, if not perhaps the very best WCW pay-per-view of all time. Great American bash 1989. I know so many of my hardcore WCW and NWA fans, they count this as one of their very favorite shows. We've got a double ring here. Nick Patrick is going to be our referee. And uh, we got Eddie Gilbert there to support uh, Sting, and and Great Muda has Gary Hart in his corner. This presentation of good and evil, the bright neon colors of Sting, who just jumped out of one ring and into another. Man, what a what a great classic '80s look and vibe this match is. Yep, yeah, he just he just shot right by Klondike Bill. Klondike's got the red suspenders on. Okay, you want to. Uh, if you want to notice down at the, uh, there, he's got a cap on, he got red suspenders. I see him. And he's got a headset on. Don't know what he's doing. Well, I do know what he's doing. He's checking out women. He's not watching the match. Is he getting cues from the truck? Yeah. I think it's, I think he's ringing the bell. I think he's our bell ringer or their, their bell ringer. Where was this? Where was this venue? Uh, let me throw that in our Google machine real fast. Great. American. I why, why are you doing that? I'm thinking that I'm just, uh, amazed. Muda was way, way ahead Baltimore, of Baltimore. Duh. I should have known that. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Sting's so far ahead of us. I mean, think about what we're watching. This is 1989. Yeah. And it would be easy for you to be convinced that this is 1995. Hmm. Uh, I, 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 one of the things that gives it away is the safety rails. Oh yeah, for sure. That's old school. That really is old school. Uh, I mean, uh, the, I like the, the buntings on the side of the ring. That's I was different. looking at that the same way, you know, for great yeah. American bash that works. Yeah, it sure does. And I'm very interested to see, uh, there's Tim Smith, uh, who was sitting up on the, uh, with the camera there on the side, one of the camera and Tim, Tim was around for a long, long time. Matter of fact, I was really surprised he's still not doing wrestling with us. I guess he's been a Turner for a long time. Um, this same but, show, by the way, the very next match, we've got Lex Luger and Ricky Steamboat. That's going to be Steamboat finishing up here whoa. in uh, in WCW. Think about that too. Or right after his feud with Ric Flair in 1989, he did a very brief feud. I mean, cause that feud with, with Rick only ends in May in Nashville. Here we are in July. He's finishing up with Luger. Okay. So for steamboat, he left, uh, NWA and went to the WWF. Well, he was out for just a while. I don't think he showed up in the WWF until 91. So he was, he just like ran his gym or whatever for a year and change. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. When you chart his career, man, there's some interesting, like, wait, he left then when was WrestleMania three? What year was that? 87. That was two years prior to this. Okay. So he came back. Yes. What I'm saying. He left and came back, then left again. And then as we know, came back as the surprise, a partner for Dustin Rhodes. Remember? Yep. Um, so he left, came back, left, came back. He did that a lot through his career. Yeah. I don't know. But he didn't have how about, a, how, how about him coming out as a special, uh, timekeeper. So cool, man. Wasn't that cool? It was really cool. I mean, when you went, when, and I don't know how much I got across on the, on the telecast, but when I know we all think about Ric Flair, right? The Greensboro Coliseum, but buddy steamboat at the Greensboro Coliseum, uh, the money he drew, holy smokes. I didn't even mention the final, uh, what was it called? The final, uh, confrontation or the final, uh, the, the match that he and Jay Youngblood had against Sergeant Slaughter and Don Cardotal that they turned him away at the Greensboro Coliseum. That was like 80 or 81, something like that. Early eighties. By the way, I guess, I, I guess I need to apologize. Technically Ricky worked, uh, two other shots for you guys. Uh, he did okay. uh, a house show in Orlando. Uh, five days later. And then the day after that, he did TV at center stage and then he was finished. I guess that's when he finished up, but this is his, uh, last major match with, uh, right. with WCW here for a few years. 
No, just, I, I want to tell you how, how smart, uh, as we're looking right there, how smart that uh, Muda is. Okay. He's, he sees cameras, and he makes sure that he's, that he's got that, see that rear chin lock? He's, he makes sure that he's got the rear chin lock facing the camera. Yes. He switched around. There's another camera, as you can see, sitting behind there. Okay. But he, he knows TV. Uh, and it's just, to me, it's just amazing. That's the sign of a pro right there. Went from one camera, face the other camera. He's just doing a great job. Great performer. I didn't really get the chance to work with him that much. Were you on the call for this show? No, I'm at the, I'm in the WWE. That's show. right. Well, what month did you leave? Uh, I, I left in, uh, I think I left in February. Okay. So you've 89. been gone for a few months now. Yeah. And I say that because I, I went early and then, uh, that's right. You well, came yeah. back after six. Yeah. Right. I, yeah, I was there for WrestleMania five, but I, I was there before WrestleMania five. I was there for a couple of months working behind the scenes. Man, it's so cool to me of all the WrestleManias. You were there for five and six. Those are my two favorite WrestleManias in my whole life. Like How about my that? entire oh. fandom. Five and six, man. Those are it for me. And you were there for both. Yeah. But uh turns out maybe I like my wrestling with little Tony Schiavone. Isn't that something? There's been a Tony Schiavone thread right through your fandom. Oh, that's what you think about it. Yes, it is. By the way, I got to see uh, old Slapdick Shivani last week. It was really nice to catch up with your son, who's uh, on the band of Merry Misfits with AEW. And <laughs> boy, he uh, he just dove off knee deep in the wrestling business, didn't he? Boy, did he ever! Head first, got a chance to introduce him to Nikita Koloff and Magnum TA. That's awesome. And Scotty Riggs uh, this past weekend. By the way, cool. shout out to DDP and Buff Bagwell and Scotty Riggs. Man, Scotty Riggs looks like another human. He looks like he's ready to uh, do some spokesmodel stuff, doesn't he? Absolutely. Scotty came out to one of our events, I think maybe it was last year when we were in Atlanta. And I saw Scotty and I'm thinking, wow, Scotty's really, uh, really changed. And then, of course, you know, the, if you saw the DDP video. Fantastic. About the transfer, transformation of the American males. Uh, you, you know what Scotty, where Scotty came from. But how about that? Oh, miss right for Nick Patrick. How about that? Yeah. Yeah, man. And, and so Nick takes a bump, uh, and now no referee. And now of course, stinger splash. Oh, he misses. I bet he misses. Yeah. You know, for, uh, I, I think sometimes we, uh, we forget how good a worker sting became. Yes. I mean, just boy, when that moonsault happened for great mood, was that one of the cooler moves you ever saw? It's not yeah. only that he did a moonsault when nobody else did. I mean, I guess technically maybe a few people down in Texas had been doing it, but Moodle was the first guy I saw do it. And man, it felt yeah. like he did it two thirds of the way across the ring, like 60% yes. across the ring. It's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. I, I, there you go. And sting wins it. How about that one? Oh, uh, listen to that. Part. <laughs> Man, I love that old theme. Uh, man, that crowd, this great American bash crowd, Baltimore, man, it's a, it's a WCW slash Jim Crockett promotion slash NWA town. Is it not? Yeah, Boy, it is. Oh, look at the it old really double is. referee controversy. Oh, and now they're raising Muda's posing with the belt here. Well, we have both men's shoulders were down. That was the controversial part. I think the referees may have a similar to discrepancy here. Nick Patrick can still cannot yeah. see. Well, let's go to our replay. So we've got uh, Doug Dillinger on the outside. We see Tommy Young on the inside trying to explain what the hell happened to Eddie Gilbert and Sting. But Muda and Gary Hart and Nick Patrick have all left. And uh, Muda has the NWA television title. 
What do you think about pay-per-views that have this kind of controversy? This normally feels like a dusty thing, but yeah, immediately I thought, I thought of dusty finish. He's not even there at this point. He's wrestling no. around in polka dots at this point. No. Yeah. I, for a pay-per-view, let's take a look at the replay and see who's, they got the right shoulders down. Here. Well, I mean, it looks to me like, uh, Muda got that shoulder up right there at the end. Okay. They sting shoulders, never down. Right. Yeah. And Muda's shoulder was up. So the match still should be going on. Yeah. It's that nothing, Nobody it's that nothing happened in yeah. Tommy young. Yeah, absolutely. It is. We'll pause right there. And uh, we're going to take a pause right now because <laughs> let me just go ahead and give you guys a spoiler. Okay. I love spoilers. When, when sting went back to his locker room, took off all of his gear and he got in the shower and scrubbed off that face paint and he came back out with a towel and he's about to uh, dry off and, and get his gear together and then get dressed before he got dressed. My man was hurting for certain. He needed some topical relief. He needed the amazing kind.com and not all of us are going to be doing a bit of a hardcore match. So what I'm going to recommend is that you take it from us and check out the amazing kind.com. That's where you'll find plant-based palm relief balms. Start that again. Plant-based mm. pain relief balms, creams oh, and boy. gels for your muscles and joints. It's good for what ails you. And you don't have to be a professional wrestler like Sting. You could just be regular ass Lois. Lois uses the amazing kind. So does Bruce Pritchard. So does my wife, Megan. And we want you to try it right now. The amazing kind.com. You'll get 20% off all of your orders. When you use our promo code wrestle and I'm telling you, your body is going to thank you. Now, what you'll find at the amazing kind.com is they've got infused oils for mood support and sleep, and they really work. But my favorite thing that they do is a little pain relief. And this guy knows pain. He used to be a producer and editor over at the WWE working on their commercials and marketing. And now he's trying to help people. You see, these products are made from all natural sun grown hemp and then infused with nutrient dense MCT oil. If you're using those in uh, those infused oils, but the balms, the topicals, the creams, the gels, man, it's good for your muscles. It's good for your joints. It's good. If you're trying to do it after you work out to help recover from you know, all that you've put your muscles through, or maybe you've just got some sore muscles, some stiff joints, some back aches, maybe a little arthritis after a long day, the amazing kind.com can help. I really want you to try these topicals. They've really worked in my household. I know they're going to work in yours, but they have something for everybody while you're at the amazing kind.com. If you think, Hey, you know what? A little more sleep would be good. They can help check it out. The amazing kind.com. They can hook you up for CBD, CBG, and CBN. And they've got everything you need at the amazing kind.com. Use our promo code wrestle. You'll get 20% off all of your orders at the amazing kind.com. Be sure to use our promo code wrestle. Hey, Tony, we're not done. That's just uh, one sting match down, two to go. You didn't get, get to call this one live. You weren't there for Sting and Muda, but what'd you think? I, it was uh, much shorter than I thought it would be, but it had a lot of excitement to it. <clears throat> Once again, that is excitement, not heat. Uh, I had a lo lot of excitement to it. Uh, again, I, I don't think I, I wanted to get this across, and I guess we got plenty of time to do it, how Sting was an underrated worker. Yes. You know, Sting was a bodybuilder, and Sting was big and strong, and, you know, he and Jim Helwig were the Blade Runners. I think Sting became, I don't think there's any question, Sting became a much better worker than the Ultimate Warrior was. Uh, Sting could do a lot of things. He was more than just a guy with face paint and a lot of colors that could beat his chest and bring out, out the excitement of the fans. And they drew to that. He was a guy that could actually work a good match. And I think I want to credit somebody with that. I, I think you got to credit Ric Flair with that. Yes. I, I think, I, I think Rick, I think anybody that had any run with Ric Flair learned how to work. And so I, I think that's. It was pretty cool. And, uh, it was pretty cool to see them together again. One last time over the weekend, I talked to, uh, Richard yesterday 
Mm. And you know, I didn't think about this, but you talked about that glass spot in the corner when, um, you know, they had the, the pane of glass set up in the corner and sting went through it. Well, of course, famously Rick went over to check on him. So I talked to Rick yesterday. He's like, man, that glass, that, that, that stuff will just cut you to shit. And I go, Oh yeah. How, how bad was Darby cut? He goes, how bad was I cut? And I'm like, what? I was yeah. down there on my hands and knees and all that shit. I was like, wow, I didn't think about that. So yeah. He took a big super kick to the dome last time. He'll try to interfere in the young bucks match and down goes pop pop. Yep. It was, uh, it was quite a show, man. Go out of your way to see it. If you haven't already AEW revolution in the record books. Now sting is done. He's calling it a career. And we are celebrating that mighty career. We just started with great American bash, 1989. We're going to fast forward one year to great American bash, 1990 sting is going to become the man once again in Baltimore, Maryland, this time decked out in that now famous red, white, and blue gear, uh, that I believe Sting actually recently did an interview where he said that, man, this guy was really after me to dress up like surfer sting one last time. And I did it, but I felt silly. Well. That was me. Uh, I was after him to do it because this is such a big part of my fandom. Hopefully it is yours too, but believe it or not, Tony wasn't there. I wasn't even there. So pull up great American bash 1990 right now. If you're watching along with us on Peacock, we want you to go to season four of great American bash. So just look up great American bash season four, episode one. And then we want you to go to this time code. It's two hours, 23 minutes and 35 seconds. That's two hours, 23 minutes and 35 seconds. As you're all getting that set up, uh, we'll do a couple of questions here for you, Tony. Lots of people had questions about sting. Jeremy Cummings wants to know, did sting ever rib Tony? That's a good question. Was sting a ribber? He ever rib you? No, he never did rib me, but he had a great sense of humor. I've talked about it's in the, it's in butts and seats about how he was watching those clowns and we were watching clowns perform on the, uh, bruise cruise. Um, and, um, they were on stage doing like a little interlude between acts. They were doing this crazy stuff where one would duck one would hit the other. And there would be, you know, sound of a crash of a cymbal. And he looked, thing looked at that just very serious said, man, they're stealing my spots. Oh God. I love it. And we paused and he looked at me, and just started laughing. And I thought it was one of the greatest lines. It, it's something that of all the times I've spent with Sting, that moment and that line, the deadpan delivery of that line has stuck with me forever. What um, a great fucking story that is. Yeah. Yeah. Just watching this clown stupid enough to think <laughs> we are the fucking circus. This <laughs> one is, uh, and you know what? That was, uh, to me, that, that told me that all that Sting was and did and big star that he was that he never did really take it seriously as far as you know my character who i am my uh my uh creative you know he just rolled with the punches which uh boy more people should do and i'm not talking about all in wrestling backstage i'm talking about in life that's right well, we hope you're rolling with the punches with us here too. We want you to go to great American bash 1990. As we mentioned that season four, episode one on Peacock, we're at two hours, 23 minutes and 35 seconds. We'll do one more question here, Tony, and then we'll get back to the program. Okay. Uh, this one is from, uh, Andrew and he wants to know what was your favorite sting match in AEW? Gee. Whoa, brother, your favorite one. You got to call maybe most of them or all of them yeah. even. What, uh, do you have a favorite when you think about your favorite sting match in AEW? don't say the last one is well, there it's an, gotta be, I, what about that cinematic match? Like his very first yeah. match back, that match was pretty impressive. That was impressive too. Also there, I, and I'm not going to remember the actual show, but I believe it was revolution two years ago. Okay. Where he climbed up on the, uh, up in the stands and dove off onto the table. Okay. That to me, because I really don't remember what the match was, but that spot sticks out to me because that was me thinking for the first time in AEW, what in the hell is he trying to do? 
That was uh, in uh, Orlando, Florida. Orlando, Darby Orlando, Allen, right. Sammy Guevara, and Sting beating right. uh, Andrade, Isaiah Kennedy, or I'm sorry, Isaiah Cassidy, and uh, right. Matt Hardy. Wow. How about that for a combination? That's a group of folks right there, my man. It's, it's amazing. Sometimes I go back and I take a look at the different matches that we've had in AEW and how things have changed throughout the years and yes. how the, how the different, uh, you know, people getting pushes or people uh, working in, like you said, a six man where you wouldn't even think that Andrade worked with Matt Hardy and Isaiah Cassidy. No, but it I happened like, on pay-per-view. It did happen. Yeah. Right. On pay-per-view. But that's the one I, that's the match I remember most of all, because it was, I knew it was in Orlando. I knew it was a uh, revolution. And I even think in the, in the sting package that we had, which uh, you know, hats off to everybody in AEW that worked on that package, uh, that four minute package. It was unbelievable. Uh, it really was. That was a part of it. That, that, that when he went up top and that was the one where I went to the backstage and he looked at me and smiled. He said, that one, you, um, but, um, that's the one I remember. So that's my favorite sting match, even though I couldn't remember who it was against. I remember it because I remember the spots. And I think that as a wrestling announcer, I know everybody's brain works differently, but I think what me, what I remember more than match is or the spots or the big spot. Uh, I, I did. I don't know if I told you this, but I watched sting and flair from 88 the night before on Saturday night. I watched that. You watched the first clash of the champion. First clash of the champions. I watched that match. How was it? Uh, it was uh, unique. For many reasons. It was, first of all, <clears throat> congratulations to Ric Flair. Cause I know he called that whole match. Yes. And I know I, I, I saw what he did, how he made sting, you know, and, and listen, we can go back and say that match is what made sting a star. It was part of it. It was more than just that, but that was a kickoff kind of. Yes. Because, and fans really responded, but what got me, and I even told Chris Hero that this, because Chris and I do talk a lot about old wrestling and things that happened in the past. Uh, I told Chris Hero, I said about three minutes into the match, Blair has a hammerlock on Sting, and Sting does a standing switch reversal to a hammerlock on Flair. When Sting did that standing switch, a hammerlock on Flair, the fans went bananas. Yes. And I told Chris Hero, I said, they went crazy on a freaking hammerlock. Yeah. How much has wrestling changed and fandom? How much has it changed? Yeah. Because, uh, and of course, you know, it's like no one went through a table. No one dove through glass. No one came off of a ladder for the big pops. It was just a, it was just regular wrestling moves. And they, they worked a 45 minute. Tremendous match. And again, Sting became a worker because yes. of his work with Flair. So that was pretty unique. So uh, it's just amazing when I watch Sting through the years about how he has changed and how wrestling has changed. And, you know, I, th I think if you stop and think about it, Sting realizes how wrestling has changed through the year and he wanted to change with it. Yeah. And he did. And that's one of the reasons that he has become such the icon that he is. Well said, let's watch one of his best matches. One of his most important matches ever. The first time he becomes the man and wins the world title. It happened at great American bash 1990 in Baltimore. It wasn't supposed to happen here. He was supposed to have, have this title months prior, but damn it. That knee decided it had other plans, but, uh, yeah. It happened and what a special match and special moment it was for sting fans, for wrestling fans, and for all of Baltimore, great American bash, 1990 season four, episode one, we're going to two hours, 23 minutes and 35 seconds. You just want to give us a, uh, skin a rinky dinky dink countdown here. Yeah. Get a rinky dink three and two and one play. <laughs>
Dude, what a badass entrance that is. Am I wrong? No, it's it's funny too. He's looking to his left. I'm gonna walk through that. Really? Now? <laughs> it is a badass entrance, and I'm telling you, this is the best. And I know this is the one you like. This is the best sting outfit of all time. Oh, it ain't not close. E not even close. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the pink and black. I love the black and green. And I mean, how could you not love the crow sting? But when I think about him being, you know, just this, this just checks all the boxes for me. And I, I yes, yeah. I'm the goof that wore him out to wear it one last time. And I clearly wasn't in the minority because when he had his last match, he had his sons put the shit on. So damn it. Yes. It was awesome. Exactly. And we all knew it was awesome. And now here comes the man, as I understand it, fresh off of a contract renewal. If I'm dropping the belt, by God, you're going to cut me a check. Wow. The nature boy with the big gold belt in tow. You know what I remember most about this match besides the finish. Uh, well, besides Sting's gear and then the finish is Sting's post-match in a time okay. when people didn't have a lot of nice things to say about Ric Flair, boy, Sting put him over as the greatest world champion of all time, which is probably what you're supposed to do, especially if you just beat him a little old school, yeah. but, uh, it worked. And I love that robe right there from Ric Flair. I think that one sold on eBay like 20 years ago for whatever you got in your couch cushion right now. Somebody got a steal. Mm. You know, I, uh, I had thought for Sting's last match that, that maybe we would see Gary Capetta do the ring announcing. I would have loved it. Or even David Penzer, you know, who did a lot of Sting's stuff back in the NWO days. But I guess that I, I don't know how that happened. But I, I would have liked to have seen Gary Michael Capetta one last time. That'd have been, that was above my pay grade. Was that heard? Yeah. Oh my God. Doug Dillinger, Ole Anderson and Jim heard. We, yeah. um, we can't get out of here without talking about Ole Anderson, because unfortunately last week you and I were not able to get together. You had a crazy work week with everything, getting ready for a double television taping. And then the pay-per-view. Oh, here comes Ellie What the fuck for? Well, he's going to get Ole out of here. Okay. You know, Doug Dillinger can't, can't oh, handle it. Cuffed Ole. Okay. Here's the big sale. Unfortunately, neither one of these guys are with us. And I think Ole is, uh, maybe he's not scared of Elegante, but he don't want to see the baloney, you know? Uh, so we lost Ole look Anderson. At, look man. at the, the baloney's good. Cut. Hey, the baloney's tucked to the side, but what, will not. you stop? Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, oh, Ole Anderson, yeah. such a big part of your fandom. And, uh, as a kid, even, and certainly once you actually break into the biz, Ole was there for all of it. Unfortunately, uh, we lost, we lost Ole last week, along with the former Virgil and Paul Vachon. They say, uh, I've heard this my whole life. Deaths come in threes. And, and unfortunately we got them back to back to back last week in wrestling. Uh, I want to give you a minute here to say whatever you'd like to say about Paul Vachon or Ole Anderson or Mike Jones. Didn't I uh, work with Ole, of course, longer than Mike Jones, but I, I knew Virgil very well. And he, uh, he had a great sense of humor. He didn't seem to let anything get him down, uh, which is unique in the wrestling business. Uh, but Ole, I, uh, I think my daughter, who Laurie kind of stays up with everything, first wanted sent me a text that Oli had died, and I really took it hard because Oli was, as a fan growing up, the Anderson brothers were a big deal, and Oli oh, yeah. was, Oli was to me the greatest wrestling promo ever, ever because he talked, he was serious. And he always would say, and we always got this, that if you think you're tough, if you're a truck driver out there or you work in a in a factory and you think you're a tough guy, well, come on down to a wrestling show and we'll see how tough you are. And of course, that those lines, I guess, had him, got him in trouble because he got cut up by a knife in South Carolina. 
uh, to which to until the day he died, he had a big uh, scar down his chest. So anyway, uh, be that as it may, uh, I was a big fan of his uh, and loved Ole Anderson promos. Got to know him. He was the booker when I came back uh, from WWF. Um, matter of fact, he was probably the booker at this time as this match is going on. Yeah. Because he's uh, gonna he's gonna book the Black Scorpion right after. Yeah, of course he is. Isn't that tremendous? Yep. Uh, and um, so, but Oli and I became very very good friends, and to the point where Jim Crockett, we used to say, uh, "Hey, how's your good friend Oli Anderson doing?" He would say that facetiously, because he knew that we were friends, and he knew that. Well, maybe I was one of the few people backstage that really liked Oli. Oli and I took a couple of rides together to TV from Atlanta. And I remember one specifically driving from Asheville uh, to from Atlanta to Asheville to TV, Asheville, North Carolina. And Oli imparted his wisdom on me uh, during that three-hour trip about uh, saving your money. Uh, I've got $3 million in the bank. So I'm good for the rest of my life. I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, and then he even, swear to God, this is a true story. And I know we're talking about Sting and I know we're talking about Flair, but even knew ahead of time that 9-11 was going to happen. Wait, what are you talking about? He even knew ahead that 9-11 is going to happen. He told me, he said, you just wait. He said, the mentality over in the Middle East is different than us. He said, and he even used, he even used like a, he used like an Arabic voice, you know, Mr. President, just wait. I'll just blow up myself and everybody else with me because we don't give a damn. And he talked about that. And when 9-11 happened, I swear the first time, person I thought of was Oli. And he said, just you wait. Just to wait, something big is going to happen because they have a different mentality than we do over there. How about that? Golly, what in the world are we even talking yeah. about right now? We're watching no. Sting wrestling Ric Flair from Great American Bash 1990. Uh, Tony Schiavone has wandered off into the weeds. Well, uh, and, and, and Oli also told me the story about how he didn't get home much, but when he and his wife wanted to do something, they would go to a drive-in and he, she would pop popcorn and they would bring drinks. And I said, you wouldn't even, all the money you were making, you wouldn't even go to the concession stand. He said, no. He said, I tried to save X amount of cents per every dollar that I made. And uh, that's how you did it. Tight wad probably had the first dollar he ever spent, as the old cliche goes, but uh, he imparted a lot of wisdom on me. Really did. Look at JYD in the match. Yeah. Oh, the, man. He, he was. Uh... You know, they were trying the experiment here with what Dave Meltzer called the junk food dog. Dave, you don't need, you don't need that. You didn't need to say that. How about when, uh, when Flair had Sting in the corner the first time giving him the chops and mm -hmm. Sting just shakes it off and looks at the crowd. Yeah. What do you think of rat tail Sting? You like rat tail Sting? You think you could bring a rat tail back? Me? Yeah, you. I'd love to bring a rat tail back. I think you should. I mean, if Jr. can wear that wear that big old hat that uh, has outgrown him, you can wear a rat tail. Well, I'm in the midst right now, personally, of trying to figure out what I'm going to do with my hair. What does that mean? Well, it means I'm trying to figure out what because what what are your options, Tony? What what, what are well, you leaning here, towards? Okay, so I I for so long I parted on the side. Now I'm trying to part it in the middle. Don't okay? do that. Don't do that. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. I don't know if you noticed or not. I'm parted in the middle. Uh, I just don't like it. And Lois and I were looking at stills of me. I just don't like it parted on the side. Uh, I don't like the the profile of me. And uh, I don't know. You know, I, I wore it pretty long at one time. Uh, back in my not so uh, distant Tony Schiavone, quote, fat days. Uh, so I just needed to, So maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll do the rat tail. Or maybe a mullet. I tried to mull it, didn't like it. You growing a cocaine uh, pinky nail? Is that the is that the plan? A cocaine pinky? Yeah, looks like you got a cocaine I mean, pinky nail. No, I mean, no. y'all do a lot of bumps off of that in the Greensboro. No. All right. 
But well, I'm just no. saying. No, was, I, I, no, I'm not like that. You have the no. equipment for it. You're ready. So if you what, what what do you mean you're ready? You just need a nose, right? No, I'm saying you have the fingernail. You see, Tony. Your your pinky nail. Yeah, see how it sticks up bigger than the finger? That's not normal, Tony. But if you could turn it over, turn that pinky nail over to where you're looking at it upside down. Hey, hang on, let me. Oh, that's the wrong finger. It, the pinky, this one right here. Yeah, that's the pinky. Yeah, not the middle one, Tony. Yeah, not the now thumb, the not the hand, pointer. On, the, on yeah. the other hand, this would be the pinky, right? No, that's right still here. the middle finger. I'm talking about that, right, here. right there. Yeah, that one you keep folding down. Buddy, you could get you could get a you could get a gram on there for sure. So there you go. If you're looking for a little uh, boot scoot and boogie in Duluth, if you keep that thing on you and you don't have your little spoon, don't worry. Tony Schiavone's in the backstage and he's got the equipment on his person ready for you. Never snorted cocaine in my life. Smoked a joint. Had gummies. I know. You, I gummies. know you've had a gummy. Uh, I've seen that. That was a good day. Yeah, it was. It was a lot of fun. Amazing to me that. That you got a pot store in in Huntsville, freaking Alabama. Well, it's not really a pot store. They sell they sell uh, Delta Eight, Delta Nine, and THCA. I don't do. Uh, I just learned recently what a dab was. Uh, Dave Silva is a known drug user, and uh, he was just. I, I think they were calling them rips. Whatever a rip is, he was taking big old rips to the point where our cannabar tender just said, "Oh, that one's gone." It was one of those where it's like, it's for friends and you're supposed to just take one down, pass it around and nope. No. Oh, uh, Dave Silva just get the fans pop for this figure four from, uh, Sting. I, I love that we get to see the Steiners watching sting because we knew they were big friends and to see them ringside here supporting sting is super cool. Yeah. Look at Flair sell it too. Oh, by the way, I'm so glad they're on the outside because I got something to tell you if it happened. Uh, watching a watching a match with Lois Shivani yeah. is a treat. Is a treat. She doesn't like wrestling. She's never watched much of it. And she watched 1988 with me the other day. Okay. And if this move happens here, I'm going to bring it up. So we'll wait and see what can happen how about all the iconic photos we got of sting after this match in the backstage area posing with the world title of course we know it would wind up being on various magazine covers and right such a big moment in wrestling i mean rick flair had been the man through all of the 1980s and here we are in 1990 and let's not forget that just a few months prior to this in April, the ultimate warrior beat the WWF icon of the eighties, Hulk Hogan. And how funny is it that ultimate warrior and sting started at the same time. One's rocking mm -hmm. dark hair. One's rocking blonde hair, but both are rocking face paint and neon colors and both become the man just a few months apart. Sting was supposed to be the champ before warrior. The knee disagreed and had other plans. But, uh, in April warrior becomes the man. And in July sting becomes the man. It's a cool story, man. Paul Orndorff there. I noticed Paul. I saw ringside. that. Uh, I, I like the fact that Elegante took up both chairs and only could only sit right on the corner of it. That was pretty cool. And now Flair's going to work and the fans are, are not popping. They're going to go banana. God, Flair was so good. Unbelievable. And now he's such a pain in the ass. Unbelievable. He, he doesn't even know he's, <laughs> he doesn't even know he's a pain in the ass. I've got to give Flair credit. Okay. Oh, wow. Listen to this. Okay. He certainly does have fun backstage now. Oh, there ain't no doubt. <laughs> he called me yesterday and said, as soon as the, uh, 
He said, did you see it? I go, yeah, I saw it. I was, that was something else, wasn't it? Yeah. We talked about the glass. And then he goes, oh, and my God, have you talked to Will Ospreay today? I go, no, I don't regularly talk to Will Ospreay, no. <laughs> and he goes, man, I went and saw him after his match, and he was laying down, and I said, brother, you were all my son-in-law has told me about and so much more. My goodness. Mm-hmm. Because for years, whenever anybody would say his name, he would go, who is that now? And I'm mm-hmm. like, Rick, you got to watch his stuff. You're going to love it. And even in Huntsville, I was like, he's like, so you know what they're doing on the show tonight? I said, well, I know Osprey's here. He goes, who? And I go, dude, he's like, he's, he's done. He's become like the Ric Flair of the modern era, especially like over in Japan. A lot of people think he's the best wrestler in the world and has been for the last few years. He goes, is he wrestling tonight? I go, I don't think so, but he'll wrestle at the pay-per-view. And Rick mm-hmm. just called me yesterday to just go, man, can you believe that? <laughs> yeah. He was yeah. so excited. Rick was so excited about the show. He goes, oh. man, I know WrestleMania is around the corner, but they can't hold a candle to that. My God. Yeah. yeah. I saw Rick after the show. They had, uh, they had a, wait a minute. There's a cover. There's one, two. Uh, they had a special, uh, bar set up for us. Late night bar, cash bar, in a uh, one of those uh, ballroom, and Blair was in there. He wanted me to have a drink with him, and I just circled in there before I went to my room to say hello to the people, and I told him I can't do it, Rick. I'm sorry, and of course he didn't like that. But first thing he said, he said, "How about that Will Osprey?" Yeah, he said, "Dude, here's the here's the fact about the whole show. Will Osprey and Kanosuke Takeshita stole that show, no doubt." Yeah. And I remember thinking, holy shit, you got a world title match next. You got to follow that. How are they going to, how are they going to follow that? Yeah. How are they going to freaking follow it? And I almost I thought, I, I thought the show would open with it. If I'm honest with you. Yeah. Right. I just thought, yeah. Hey, they're going to get that one out of the way. Cause that's the show stealer. I mean, just when you see it on paper, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and I even, Will and I talked for a, a pretty length of time backstage. And uh, I was talking to him about, you know, what he did and how he stole the show and how he's feeling and all that. Look, look at the crowd, really, man. They're going nuts yeah. thinking he's about to put the Scorpion death lock on. Oh, and Ole was going to get up. Eligante pulled him back. This isn't the finish, though, Tony. You can keep telling your story. No, it's, that, that's okay. Oh, here comes. Here comes the horseman. The horseman. Barry Wyndham, yeah. Sid, and Arn. One of my favorite versions of the horseman. Right. I know a lot of my old school, uh, friends, they absolutely hate when I say that. But when I was a kid, that was my favorite version. Sid looked like a cartoon wrestler, man. Barry Wyndham is such a badass, and Arn Anderson too. Goodness gracious. What a great group. I like the Luger pretty, version too, but that version right there is my favorite. Pretty good booking having uh, Steiner and Orndorff hold them off. Yeah. JYD hold them off, whatever. I like that. I love how. They're calling a great match, buddy. Yeah. So, uh, I guess that's going to be the takeaway that all the, uh, wrestling sites pick up today that Ric Flair really impressed with Will Ospreay. Well, fucking duh. <laughs> oh, look at that. What, Dives through the that, ropes, put his feet on the ropes. Scott Steiner uh-huh. knocks him off. That was pretty slick. I hadn't seen Rick that do that cool. before. That was nice. Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't already, I mean, I know that there's some tribalism that exists in wrestling, but if you're only going to watch two things from the pay-per-view, I still think it's worth the bucks to watch the sting last match and to watch, uh, Osprey and Takeshita yeah. go out of your way to see it. Flair's like, there's no way WrestleMania can compete with that. I don't know if I'd go so far as to say all that, but you saw one of the match of the year candidates in Takeshita and Will Osprey, and you saw a moment that you'll never forget. It was very emotional that match was staying and it checked all the boxes. I, I think that's when wrestling is at its best. When there's something for everybody, that modern style, that's hard hitting, that strong style, that fast pace, that innovative offense, and then the drama and the emotion and the nostalgia of the main event. Do you notice? What oh, here we, was doing his- here we go. Here we go. Of the world, the stinger 
has done it. The Stinger has done it. He is the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner and new world heavyweight champion, Sting. Man, what a big moment that was. What a pop. What a celebration. Sorry for laying out. I just wanted everybody to be able to hear that. That no. was awesome. Oh, you're right. I just had noticed they, they took a shot of the fans inadvertently right yes. before that temp of the stinger splash. And this is the shot they missed right there or the, so he hits the, the banged up knee, which is why this match was uh, delayed. Anyway, flair thinks, oh, now's my chance. Now we go to school. He's going to get ready to set up the figure four. And as soon as he goes to twist immediately, Sting grabs him. Does uh, the inside cradle one, two, three sting is your new world champion. And let's re remind everybody that this is the first time flares dropped the bot, the belt in a couple of years. I mean, he won it back from Ronnie Garvin, but since the Ronnie Garvin experiment, which ended in November of 87, this has pretty much been flares title. Right. And for it to go. No disrespect to Ron Garvin, but to sting, this felt like a passing of the torch more so than say the Ron Garvin match did to me. Sure. It, it was, uh, and it was a passing of a torch. I mean, let's think about, let's think about 88 that I was talking about and sting arrives on the scene and flair makes him a star to right here where flair made him the world champion. So. I think this is when they're going to float down. There it is. They have his yeah. face that they're going to set on fire in the background. Uh, it's, it's very 1980s, but it's pretty cool. Uh, clearly that was the idea. They told him, Hey, you got to get up the ramp after you win the uh -huh. match. And there he is. Yeah. Yeah. And he was of course going to do an interview here and going to really put over the former champion, Ric Flair in a way that you didn't often hear a lot of baby faces and, uh, uh -huh. it's with Gordon Soley. Let's track it here. Congratulations, Dan. My mouth is really dry, so try and understand what I'm going to say. Ric Flair is the greatest world champion of all time. Me, on the other hand, I'm a champion tonight and tonight only. I've got some big shoes to fill in Ric Flair's shoes. Although we may have our differences, all I have to say is I'm going to do the best that I can do. And that's it. This has, oh. this has to be the happiest moment of your life, wasn't it? <laughs> Rick Flair wasn't champion six times with the help of the horseman every time. He's truly a great champion. I know you don't want to hear it, maybe some of you, but it's true. It's a big accomplishment for the Stinger in his short career. Thank you very, very much, everybody. Okay, thank you, Stinger, the new NWA heavyweight champion. I mean, think about that. This is supposed to be a me, me, me exhibition here, but that's not what they're doing. Uh, he's putting over the nature boy. And I just think that says a lot about Sting. Uh, Sting has joined us and told some of those stories at multiple star casts. And I can't believe this is a real thing, but star cast down under is here. I'm jumping on a plane next month and I'm flying to Ballarat, Victoria, Australia. And I can't wait oh, to see wow. you there. April 11th through April 14th. We got Eric Bischoff. We got Bret Hart. We got Shelton Benjamin. We got Mickey James. We got Chris masters. He's bringing his low key big hog just for Tony and so much more. We've got not one, but two wrestling shows. Mickey James is going to present H E R her. It's an all women show. And Bret Hart's bringing the Australian stampede, a super card of wrestlers from wrestlers all over the world. We've also got those stage shows. I'm on stage with Bret, the Hitman Hart for the first time ever. Can't wait to pick his brain about the 30th anniversary of his WrestleMania match with Owen Hart. Plus I got Eric Bischoff and so much more on stage. You got the meet and greets galore. You get to meet all your favorites, see the matches, watch the shows. Starcast.com can hook you up right now. That's S T A R R C A S T dot com. Ballarat, Victoria, Australia. Here we come for Starcast Down Under. Grab yourself a bracelet. Don't miss any of the events at Starcast.com. So Tony, I can't believe this is real. 
but we've got one more sting match left in us. And what a match this one is. We're going to Saturday night. So we started off with great American bash 89. Now we just watched great American bash 1990 where sting went from being television champ in 89 to world champ in 90. And now we're going to go a little later, August 21st, 1993. So three years and a few weeks later, we're going to be watching sting and flair again from August 21st, 1993. Watch along with us on WCW Saturday night. It's season two, episode 34. We want you to go to 46 minutes and 10 seconds. That's WCW Saturday night, season two, episode 34. We're going to be 46 minutes in and 10 seconds. That's 46 minutes, 10 seconds. Let's do a few more questions about sting. Brian Kaufman wants to know, what do you think is the favorite face paint that he ever did? Does Tony have a favorite? Well, I think sting's favorite face paint is obviously the black and white crow. Yeah. Uh, what about yours? Favorite? Yeah. Hmm. It's, it's hard to really, you know, I watched that 88 show and that was black and blue and red face paint, yes. which was pretty cool the way he did it. I've told the story before that I asked Sting, this was before the crow I said, uh, how do you decide what face paint you're going to wear? He said, or how, how do you decide the design? I know the he tried to make the colors kind of match. I know that. And he said, I sit down. I have no idea what I'm going to do. I just go with it. So there was no special design for it. Um, but, uh, there's definitely the crow is my favorite. Uh, I think, uh, a lot of fans will remember what we just saw the stars, on yes. the red, white, and blue face yes. paint. That's, that took some time to do that. Um, but, uh, yeah, the crow was the best one. Uh, Frank 23 wants to know where would Tony rank Vader as one of sting's greatest rivals? Oh, he's, uh, gosh, I think he's, I think he's top two, isn't he? Flair and Vader. Who would, who would have uh, Flair, Vader, Muto? Uh, as far as opponents for sting. I mean, I, I would yeah. think Flair's number one, right? I think Vader and cactus probably make the list, right? But Vader's probably number two. I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do, uh, great. yeah. Here's right. one from Eric. Eric wants to know, Tony, when Crow Sting was mm. popping in from the rafters or under the ring in 96 and 97, were you or the other Nitro announcers aware? Was it on the format sheet or was the information kept from you to generate a better reaction? It was not on the format sheet. There was a concern that someone would leave their format sheet in the back and therefore they didn't want put all this and it's still like that today. You just kind of put matches. You list matches in interviews. You don't list angles. You don't list so and so you don't list any creative on the format. Uh but I did know when Sting would be coming out. I did. Um today I really don't know much of anything today. And we talk about that. Uh Nigel uh and Kevin and I have talked about that. We don't want to know, man. We just want to really react. So, uh, I don't know what's going on, but I figure, you know what? I've been doing this long enough to, to know that I can react. Now I will be told in my ear where we're going after something happens. Right. But, uh, because I, they, they want to make sure that I'm pushing the angle, the right direction or what, but there's no creative on the format. And I, but I did know when Sting was coming out. Let's talk about, uh, Huntsville briefly. I was there, obviously it was mm. a big day for my fandom, but it's also the last time we would see sting come down from the rafters. And I know, I know that the immediate talk online from the AW haters is what about Martha Hart? Well, you've mm. probably already read that. Let me just remind you, Tony Khan being classy. Like he always is reached out directly to Martha Hart and got her blessing before they did that. But as a fan. My goodness, to see him come down from the rafters one last time, man, that was, uh, that was, that was special. That was awesome. Yeah. What'd you think? First of all, for all the haters, uh, this statement, first of all, cut your penis off as big as you can. Most yes. of you probably have it as big as I have a Vienna sausage anyway. And the reason you're, the reason you're online typing and not, uh, 
not facing people face to face with your criticism is because you have a very small dick. Okay. That's number one. Okay. Well, uh, number two, uh, number two, cut it off yep. and make sure you're walking around with a bloody end sticking out because okay. that's the only thing in life that you're worth doing. That's number one. Uh, number two, Tony did call Martha Hart because I was there when he fucking called her. Yes. Okay. And he told me, go let Sting, Darby, and the Bucks know that Martha Hart and I have talked and she's given it her blessing. So I went and told them what the communication was. So I was in the midst of that. Okay. Would not have done it without first talking to Martha Hart. So what the AWA, a, a, like them too, what the AW haters are doing, just putting bullshit out there because they're fucking worthless. That's right. Uh, that's the real story behind this. The real story behind this is as an AEW troll or even as a WWE troll, are fucking worthless. Wow. Take that to your grave. Can we talk uh, about Sting coming down from the rafters? What'd you think? Yeah, it was phenomenal. It was absolutely phenomenal. I think it had to be done. Yeah. One last time one you time. gotta one last, of course it had to be done one last time. Um, yeah, it was pretty special. Also something that was pretty special. And I thought was kind of cool. You know, we've talked about stings, uh, sons coming out dressed up at sting. Yeah. Sting. His first son walked out, you know, with the, uh, with the surfer sting look, Yeah, red, white, and blue. Fans thought it was really staying really in the arena. Yes. Man, that's awesome. When, when he first walked, fans went freaking crazy. And I'm thinking there are some fans that think that's really him coming out looking like that because he came out first. Uh, Steven, the kid on the left, as you're, if you're watching us right now, we've got a still shot of it is the kid that played, uh, I University thought for sure Kentucky. Garrett played at Kentucky. It was Steven that no, played at Kentucky. Steven played at Kentucky. Yeah. I got you. Tight end Jones yeah. over there. Yeah. Yeah. He and I talked about that and, uh, I told him, I said, I was there at your senior day. He said, you were, I said, yeah, we played at, uh, Commonwealth stadium. The, the dogs did for your senior day. And, uh, he said, yeah, he said, I was, I didn't play that day. I was injured. I said, yeah, but I, I saw you at senior day. And when he did his stinger splash, got up in the air. You could tell he was an athlete. He jumped from about halfway across the ring. Yes. You could tell he was a freaking stud. So, but anyway, fans thought that big pop that sting and, and they weren't disappointed when the real sting count came out at all, but it was the original pop was, Oh my gosh. You think that's really sting. Our gawk the butcher says, uh, would Tony net more poon at a goth rave with crow sting face paint? Or kiss demon face paint. Well, uh, our gook, I, uh, I'm not uh, a poon netter. <laughs> well, I had to answer the question. Netter. Oh my! Wait, is is, well. is net used as a actual net to? Like real in I don't, trout. I don't think you're or actual uh, actual gross net. I, I think it I means know. gross net. I don't think it okay. actually means <laughs> captive, but I guess it could go technically either way. Uh Maria says, Can't wait for this show. What's Tony's favorite memory about Sting? It doesn't necessarily have to be wrestling related. Now you told us about the clowns. I think that's my best memory of Sting. Is there yeah. another one that even comes close, or is it, will you always remember that deadpan delivery above everything else? No, I always remember that among everything else. Yeah, about Sting. Yeah. Also, I I think I'll remember about Sting, and I I mentioned this earlier that when he jumped off the uh, the seating um, in Orlando and landed on the table, and I went backstage shaking my head, he said that one was for you. I remember him saying that. That was so cool that he said it was me, which I mean, it probably wasn't, but it was cool. So those are my two favorite sting memories. Isn't it something? Uh, I have a lot of, well, I have another one too. Um, and I, we've played that here it's in the archives. Sting's first match on TBS. Oh yeah. And him 
you know, as, as we would do, then we would have either a, a promo at the beginning of a segment or at the end. And sometimes both sting had just wrestled his first time on TBS and he rolls down to the ring and I stick my microphone in front of him and he's <gasps> trying to talk. I thought that was kind of funny. So that's a, that's a pretty fond memory as well. I even think he was wearing, if I recall, day glow green, uh, tights at that time. So day glow green, How about day glow green. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think you're wrong. And, uh, I'm excited for us to, uh, watch one more sting match. This is going to be a lot of fun. If you haven't already pull out WCW Saturday night, season two, episode 34. We're going to go to 46 minutes and 10 seconds. It actually aired on August 21st, 1993. So they're getting ready for fall brawl and more games and all that jazz in 93. And we're going to get a little sting flare match to get us going. You just want to give us a quick and dirty countdown here. Here, quick and dirty in three, two, one, play. is the feature confrontation. It is set for one fall with TV time remaining. It is for the NWA Heavyweight Championship. Introducing first the challenger from Venice Beach, California. Winning 251 pounds. This is Sting. Now this is classic surfer Sting here. Mm-hmm. He's got uh, all the bright colors. He's got the the jacket. I mean, I don't know who was making those, but that looks like the lady who was making Flair's robes. That looks like an Olivia with that amount of sequins and stuff. I mean, it's really impressive his presentation. Yeah, it's got to be Olivia. I don't think he's got the red tail on on this one either. No, he's probably gro- uh, grown it out by ninety three or outgrown yeah. it rather. Boy, does looking to center stage bring back some bad memories. Um, but uh, this is pretty cool, and this should be great. And, uh, with a nod to the, the nod to the, the guys who worked on the sting music that we had Yes, uh, in AEW cause I met them and they're great guys. Uh, Mikey Rucka, shout out to him. Yeah. Mikey Rucka, shout out to him. Uh, there's nothing like that sting music. You like that I version. Mean, I love it. Yeah. I like and the version Dog before sting. that. Okay. But you, you like, he does this, he mm-hmm. does that. Yeah. I, was that a Jimmy Hart thing? Yes. I, I think it was, right? Yeah. Yes. That sounds like something Jimmy Hart. Look at this. How many of these little kids that you're seeing, these little stingers are in their 30s right now, right? Or more. I mean, listen, more, if that right. kid was 12, he's 40-something now. Yeah. Wow. Is that something? Okay. That was a flare uh, poster there. Nick Patrick still the referee. Man, it's like second and verse, same as the first. Ric Flair, Sting, Nick Patrick. You know, there was a time where, hey, man, ratings are down. We got to figure something out. How do we get people to watch this week? Oh, I know. Just let Flair wrestle Sting on TV. Ta-da. Works every time. We would have never have done that in 85. <laughs> never. No okay. chance. I mean, there's <laughs> no chance. You know, That's back then, it was all about promos, and maybe you see Sting wrestle you know, uh, some local enhancement and talent and get a win in 38 seconds, but you're not going to have a competitive match with your two top stars. No chance. No, no. Then, then maybe flair would attack him and then run away. Yes. And then you say, I see that's well, guess what? They're coming to the Omni. Yes. I'll go see it there. And that was the old mentality behind pro wrestling back then. That's what got me hooked. That's what got me spending all that money <clears throat> that I didn't have. Got me spending all that money. <laughs> Man, what a fun match this is. This is one of the forgotten great matches they had because they had so many big pay-per-view matches yeah. that a Saturday night match at center stage probably just didn't uh, make a lot of people's lists. But this is a fun one. I haven't seen this match in a long, long time, so I'm excited for us to watch this one. And I got to tell you, it's a little thing, and I shouldn't care, but I really like the the look and feel of this ring. I'm colorblind, yeah. but are those blue, black, and yellow ropes, or is that purple? Yep. Blue, black, yellow. That's right. Layers in purple, stings in blue, light blue canvas, uh, cover for the mat, and, of course, the WCW colors on the side. You know, um, 
I was talking earlier about the reversal of the hammer lock. That's yeah. what they started with the hammer lock there too. It's clearly something that is uh, one of their go-tos. Yeah. So th they're probably working very similar match um, here than they had done. Well, again, knowing the pacing of this match, they're going to put some time into it, right? Thing goes down and... Um, so if this move comes up here, first of all, I want to preface what I'm going to say if the move arrives by saying this. Watching a wrestling match with Lois Shivani. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like watching a wrestling match with a person that's never seen wrestling. Okay. It's like, what are they doing now? Why are they doing that? What's going on here? Why did he do that? And I, to I said, uh, I told her, I said, all right, Flair's going to jump up on the top turnbuckle and going to reach up. Sting's going to reach up at the throat. Flair's going to shake his head no, but Sting's going to peel him off. He said, how did you know that? Oh, gosh. I said, for crying out loud. <laughs> I said, I said I've, I've, done a hundred, I've done hundreds of Flair matches. Uh, so, but anyway, she's, it's, it's funny watching with her. Because she, as, as everybody, Everybody does. I really think this. Even if you're one of those uh, people out there that uh, feel you're above pro wrestling, you know there's a lot of people out there. But they're not listening to this program. They're not. But even if you were are, you see a good match, you're going to fucking get into it. Oh, yeah. On some level. You're telling me that if you are an elitist and think that wrestling is phony, and you sit down and watch Will Ospreay going up against Kanosuke Takeshita, that you're going to go, Psh, that was terrible. You're not. No. They, they draw on so many human emotions on that that you just, you're going to freaking gonna love it. So that's what watching with her is about. I'm not saying she's elitist. She doesn't watch it. She doesn't care for it. She doesn't like it, which has probably been one of the reasons that our marriage has lasted so long. Uh, My wife had to watch the pay-per-view too. She was yeah. uh, not thrilled, right? But yeah, you know, I did a, I did a pregame show with Eric, and then I did a postgame show. So of course, I had to actually watch it in real time. And sometimes I'll watch these shows, like I'll DVR them, and then skip around find the things I want to watch. So uh, yeah, about halfway through the pay per view, she goes, "Okay, this is later than I thought. I got to go to bed. I'm getting up early." Yeah, right. Hope it works out. I hope he wins. Yeah. You know, she uh, she was a big Sting fan too. She. Is he is one of the few wrestlers that she holds in very very high regard, and so uh, when I told her that or she was asking about my trip to uh, the Huntsville show the next day, and she said, "How was Steve? Did you get to see him?" And I said, "Yeah, I saw him." She goes, "He was awesome, isn't he?" I go, "Yeah." She goes, "Even if you don't have a lot of time with him, you just shake your hand and look you in the eye. You just feel like he's a real human being. He's not one of these mm -hmm. wrestlers." Yep. And I go, "Yeah, he is a real human being. Well said." I was uh, checking out of the hotel at Greensboro on uh, Monday morning. I always take the first flight, and I'm down there. It's me and Matt. Uh, Lance Archer was standing down there, Anthony Bowens, a couple other guys getting ready to get on the shuttle, and Sting walks down. Of course, Sting has a car, and he walks through, and we just do some very – we talk about the glass, yep. how you know he, he got cut up a little bit. Everybody got cut up a little bit how great of a night it was. And he turned around and looked at us. He said, well, I guess I'll be seeing you guys when I see you. And he walked out. And I remember thinking that may be the last time I talked to him. Oh, well, well it probably not, but it could be. No, and you, I, just, it, I mean, I know that's the end of your effort. <laughs> you know? <laughs> exactly. I'm just good enough friends with Tony to know if he's up the street from me, yeah. He'll text me right before he leaves and said, thought I'd see you. See you around. And that's it. Like that's the, that's the Shivani way. I know. And it's like, I should have said when Sting said, I'll be seeing you around. I should have said, Hey, call me sometime. Cause I ain't gonna call you dude. I should have said that. Oh, God, I have a feeling man. he will be, uh, at, at a few more special AEW events here, or there, not in the yeah. face paint, not repelling down from the rafters, just being, uh, Respected as the legend that he is. Yeah. 
By the way, I know we don't normally talk about this sort of thing, and I'm not going to try to get you in trouble, but I do want to acknowledge that as we're recording, it's Tuesday morning. So it is the night after Monday night raw and Michael Cole in the middle of Monday night raw stopped calling the matches in the ring for WWE and said, I want to acknowledge and congratulate sting on a tremendous career that spanned nearly four decades. As he had his last match last night, congratulations, Sting. Something along those lines. And Pat McAfee, who's doing color with him, pipes in and says, what an epic match it was too last night. And then, of course, Michael Cole put a stop to that shit right away, and they started talking about the match in the ring. But I thought that was pretty dang cool that WWE, in the middle of their big show, acknowledged Sting. Just goes to show you that a, this is a different regime, maybe that appreciates wrestling exactly. a little more than maybe it has been in the past. And B, how special Sting is to get a shout out like that when he's actively main eventing for the competition. Pretty cool little thing, I thought there. Pretty cool little thing, but the right thing to do. Yes. Wonder what all the eaters said about that. Well, listen, I'm sure there's a lot of idiots who have a problem with everything, but. Yeah, right here. There you Cut go. It off. Stick it in your ear. Canal hey, service. Uh, we, we were we were reading. Uh, there's an article that came out in the New York Post that I did an interview for about Sting, and uh, it came out the other day. Got the link to it, and I sent it to Lois. Lois read it. She loved the interview. First thing Lois said, "This is Lois again." Did you know that in the first paragraph there's a grammatical error? Oh my god! Damn. Yeah, I said. Yeah, I said, yeah. I said, that's the internet. She said, what do you mean? I said, there are no more editors. It's get it out as fast as you can. And they just type it up and they post it. They don't send it to an editor to look at it. She said, really? I said, yeah. Thank the internet for that. It's not getting, it's not do a story. It's get a story out first, what it's about. So then to the bottom, as she scrolls down, she sees all these other stories about wrestling. She said, look at this story. I said, nope. Don't look at those stories. She said, what do you mean? I said, First of all, they're clickbait and they're written by fucking idiots. And I said, uh, I said, I'm going to give you a line that Kevin Smith said in his book about movies when he was criticizing the critics. He said, don't read about the movies. Go watch a movie. So I'm telling you, don't read about wrestling. Watch wrestling. And I told her, I said, and I quickly stopped her from doing that because I'm thinking if she gets into that rabbit hole of reading what the dirt she guys write, she's never going to stop knowing her. So anyway, so we're watching that. I don't know where I'm going, but back to the match here. Sting with a half crab. Yeah. I mean, they're getting plenty of time here in an era yeah, where this was a lot of time. Yeah, this is not normal, you know, 1993 to have this long of a main event, this special of a main event, especially inside a center stage. But is this me and Jesse on the call? Or is this Jesse and JR? Let's track it here. Two. That's you. Flair prone on the mat and Sting takes flight, giving Flair ample opportunity to roll out of the way. Wow, what a battle we have seen. Well, he telegraphed that one stinger. Did he actually got too much altitude on that elbow? So there you go. It was you and Jesse. Me and Jesse. Yeah, that's right after JR left, I think. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking there. I mean, he's he's done WrestleMania in April, so of course he's not right. here in August. <clears throat> right. It's still nice to hear Jesse. I, I was wondering, you know, I, uh, I don't think it was acknowledged on camera, but I think Arn Anderson was at Sting's last match and we, uh, we saw that DDP was there and Lex Luger was there and Scotty Riggs was there and Magnum TA was there. Uh, did Nikita. we miss, did we miss anybody else? No, Nikita, uh, David Crockett was there. Obviously. Oh yeah. How was David, man? I love seeing him on there. He was great, man. Great. Uh, we, uh, did some, uh, on cameras and as you know, during the pregame show, and I thought we were just going to talk about the history of Sting and Sting the Man. And Tony said, no, tell David, talk about the angle. I said, okay, we'll talk about the angle. And I think David, for really not knowing what the angle was, did a pretty damn good job. But uh, got a great response from the fans, us standing there. 
And uh, damn. Damn, I'm pretty. Oh, my God. Look at the way you're parting your hair. You look like the worst beetle. <laughs> Sonny. Son, uh, <laughs> I got to fix that hair. I got to do something with it. There's uh, on the top, there's a gray patch now, which is bummed me out. But I guess eventually, eventually uh, there's a stinger splash. I miss a stinger one. splash. Yes. Okay, here we go. We still got a lot of it? time left in this one. I think they do uh, yeah. post match interviews in this too, if I recall. Oh, okay. So this is uh, just a few months before uh, Flair wins the WCW world title from Vader. I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute. He came out with the big gold belt. Yeah, this is the era where we're doing two belt. Hmm. Didn't last long. No. But the big gold belt always felt more important than the other belt to me. I don't know why. Maybe because it was there first. Maybe because it was bigger. What do you think of uh flair and purple doing his best Harley race here? Hmm. I like the, I like the purple. Hey, I'm a purple type guy. Are you? Oh yeah. I love purple. You, you got, you like that purple drink? You mean uh grape Kool-Aid? Well, you've been sipping that lean. Sipping the ween, the lean, the lean. Yeah. The lean you on that lean. What's lean. Are you double cupped up? How come you all, how come you know all the hip terms? Have you, uh, have you, do you still keep the Jolly Ranchers or do you just let somebody else bring those? I don't, I don't like the Jolly Rancher. Where you at on Sprite? Sprite? Yeah. The drink? Yeah. I don't drink Sprite. What about cough syrup? You a big fan of cough syrup? Only if necessary. Okay. But, uh, my, uh, my voice doctor gave me these little, uh, soft gels now. Prescription soft gels for my cough. I have to take cough syrup. Hey, tell me about that uh, that devil's dick you were sucking on backstage in Huntsville. Can you tell me about that? Uh, he uh, the devil wasn't there. God. No, no. I'm saying you were walking around with this pipe apparatus hanging out your mouth before you went out and did the show. No, you, you, that was a whistle. Okay. Okay. And that that whistle I would blow, telling wrestlers, fucking up. Go back to your locker room. You got your finish. Good. Shut the fuck up. Things like that. I don't think if you, I don't think you, if you notice or not, I like to have a good time backstage. I did uh, notice that. Yeah. And I've got to have a good time backstage because if not, I'll go insane. Yes. So, and I say that, listen, I say that because not because I don't like my job because I love my job, but I say that just because it is quite a task to get television off running. Oh man. It is. It is an incredible task that takes a lot of people and I'm very much involved in it. So and by so the way, I, shout I, out to the AW production crew. I don't think production and wrestling oftentimes get their just due, but these guys are loading and are unloading and then setting up and then loading again this equipment multiple times a week all over the country. Climbing up in high places and hanging things and rigging things and boxing things up. And you know, nobody ever, they don't get camera time. They're not getting discussed, but man, they really keep that train on the track. So shout out to all those guys doing the literal heavy lifting. You know, I, I think I, I, I agree. I, I, I'm amazed what they accomplish in the short period of time. Uh, oh, great move by flair that time to move out of the way. Boy. And, and I, sting I, hit that top rope hard boy. Yeah. I think that I have often thought that the young wrestlers or even any wrestler should be made to, to arrive the same time the crew does just hang out the entire time. Just watch them put that together. You know, the, the whole, the whole set and everything, the ring, the lighting grids backstage, all the wiring and everything was done the day of Greensboro, the day fucking of. Wow. It's called, it's what we call a same day load in. And it was done that way. I think because Trump had a rally in Greensboro Coliseum the day before. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I believe that's what it was. Uh, but, uh, the Greensboro Coliseum was not available to load in the day of. 
And sometimes if there's nothing in the venue the day before, we can do the day before, which always makes everybody's life a lot easier. But same-day load-ins are tough. So, yeah, congratulations to all those guys who put in the work. Now, I like this flair turn to tell somebody in the crowd to shut up. That's a classic flair. Tony, as we've been recording this morning, uh, it's come out, and I just shared this news with uh, with our producer, Dave Silva. But yeah. it's just come out what, what Sting has been up to in his retirement. You know, sometimes when you win the Super Bowl, we hear about guys saying, Hey, you won the Super Bowl. What are you going to do now? Oh, I'm going to Disney World. Yeah. Well, everybody wondered, Hey, what is Sting going to do? He had his last match on Sunday. What is he going to do? And he told you, I'll see you when I see you. And everybody wanted to know what's next for the Stinger. Well, apparently he hopped on a plane and went to Las Vegas, Tony. I didn't know that was something that Sting was into, but I guess he is. Okay. Because I have it in my notes here, this breaking news that just happened since you and I've been recording uh -huh. that sting has flown to Las Vegas and here's the headline from TMZ Las Vegas hotel guests stung in testicles by scorpion in bed. <laughs> He's stinging people hitting the scorpion in, counts. on, on the testicles. Mm. Now, speaking of testicles, talking to the nature boy in Huntsville Ugh. and boy, he desperately wanted to turn on Sting. <laughs> I know Conrad, will you go talk to Tony? You're friends with him. Just go talk to him. And I'm like, what, what, what are you talking about? Just go talk to him. Try to convince uh -huh. him. Me turning on Sting is best for business. And I go, uh. Rick, you work here. You're in the storyline. I think maybe you should tell him. I told him. I told him I should turn. I told him. But I think if he hears it from you, <laughs> I'm not going to go talk to Tony about this. He goes, no, no. Seriously, hear me out. And hit him with this line. Tony, it's only worked 10 other times. It'll work one more time. <laughs> and I'm like, I think that's why he doesn't want to do it. He goes, what do you mean? I go, you've done it 10 times. But one more. I'm like that right there. That is Ric Flair in a nutshell, but what one more last call. Oh, one, one more. All right, guys, seriously. We're closing the bar. One more. We do one more. All right, mm -hmm. so Rick, that's your last match. Well, one more. I think that's the, uh, the Ric Flair motto in life. One more. Look at this picture and picture we doing. Or I mean, that that's ahead of the time picture. for 1993. And I like the positioning. If I'm honest with you. Yeah. I know you hate center stage because you hate the building, but as a fan, I love the look. I think it would be you cool did. if AEW would run there one time. I know you hate no, it. Don't even put, don't even put that in the atmosphere. please. All don't right. even put that out there. All right. It's in your backyard. I thought you'd like to not have to get on, get on a plane. I, no, no. I, NXT has run there. I had run there before. Do they still run there or what do they do? I don't even up with, or do they have a, a location they run? Do you have an answer for that? Nope. You don't know where NXT runs? Um, I think, uh, no, I mean, I don't, I know they're not in full sale anymore. I guess they're at the performance center. I don't know. I don't watch yeah, NXT. Do they still have a TV show? NXT? Yeah, they do. I guess they're at the, I guess they're at the PC. Okay. Anyway, they ran center stage because I went there one day. Right. Right. Uh, our buddy, the, the referee, got me in. I got to see Terry Taylor. Got to see Regal. I got to see Billy Kidman to tell Billy that I hate him for Tory Wilson. Uh, I got to see uh, Terry Taylor. Uh, I think I mentioned what else did I see. I saw a bunch of people I hadn't seen in a long time. And then, of course, left before the matches. Here we go, man. We're, uh, in the second act of this match. I mean, this is, uh, yeah. this is a long one, much longer than I think maybe, maybe even I expected because when I saw it was a Saturday night thing, it's like you have an expectation, right? Right. This is giving them plenty of time. 
I'm trying to think. Was this the Bill Watts era? Yes. Okay. No, no. Watts was gone. Watts was gone because yeah. because uh because Jr. is gone. So this is the right. Ole Sharon Sadello Eric Bischoff era. Yeah. And the reason I reason I had a feeling it wasn't Bill Watts was because I was doing Saturday Night and during the Bill Watts era I was doing Worldwide with, with Jesse and I on Worldwide. Believe it or not, this match goes 39 minutes and 35 seconds. Wow, it's a big deal. Blair's foot or arm. That's an old Blair maneuver. I mean, a 40 minute TV match in 1993. That's, that's pretty rare air right there, buddy. You'll notice we always had a lot of kids at center stage, right? And I always thought that that took away from the atmosphere. Let me tell you why, because the kids were always busy. Right. Their attention span wasn't there. Uh, and it just seems like there you see a couple of kids playing in the, in the aisle way. And because the fans were so visible, it, uh, look at Flair take that bump. What now, is- what, uh, right now, Nick Patrick is telling Sting what Flair told him to tell Sting. <laughs> That's, I, t- I was telling Lois, I was talking to Lois when we were watching the match from 88 about the communication between wrestlers. Right. And how Flair was the master of that and how that's one of the, I think it's a lost art. And I'm, I'm telling you, I, I think it's a lost art because see, Flair's telling, he just, Flair just told Nick to tell Sting and Sting, and Nick is telling Sting what's coming up next. I, you just, I don't know if you notice it. I notice it because I see screeners. Okay. I see screeners of rampage. Right. Kids don't know how to kayfabe their talk anymore. Right. You just, I mean, it's like, why don't you just shout it to everybody? You dumbass. And I talked to him about that. Them sometimes I said, you need to watch your match. You need to watch. You need to see what's going on here because you're, you're not doing a good job of if you're going to talk and they all talk to each other, they all call things. Uh, if you're going to talk to each other, you need to, sh- you need to be able to show how Blair's telling, see, shaking his head and talking to Sting about what they're doing next. It's, he was a master at it. And of course the guys he worked with back in the day were masters at it too. So that's how he learned it. I just, uh, Sometimes, sometimes to me, parts of the magic of, of wrestling are lost. Right. I, uh, and I guess that's the old curmudgeon, old school, Tony Schiavone talking. By the way, this was uh, 750 fans here at center stage tickets were free. And this is a three-star match according to Dave Meltzer, <laughs> but goodness yeah. gracious, 40 minutes of flair and sting sign me up. Yeah. Look at Sting pop back up. That's that's good. Yeah, it and is. that's Stinger. That's Stinger stuff, man. And immediately, Flair starts backpedaling. These guys just know each other like the back of their hand. Yeah, I agree with you. That's probably Sting's number one rival. Mm-hmm. Later, maybe number two. The White Castle of Fear, right? King of the Cable, and blowing up. People on the beach, a boat, boat on the beach, a little person, little person, the shark fan cousin of Dylan. I can't believe he went to work the next day, staying in balls in in Vegas. Pretty crazy. That's so bad. That's what happened. I didn't do it. You're, you know, you're, you know, people that really don't know you, if they're tuning into this podcast, yeah, they're going to walk away. Said that Conrad Thompson guy, he's really full of shit. Yes. And we're I all am. going, we're all going, duh. I think that's been well established at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I like being full of shit. It's fun. It makes, I know. It, it makes this for a good podcast. It makes the day go if, faster. Yeah. <laughs> if, it, if we weren't full of shit, I mean, we'd just be another uh, podcast. Which, by the way, I thought about this the other day that uh, 
how long we've been doing it now. Forever. Uh, but successfully. Yeah, I've had fun and with it. There, there, there are millions, probably not millions, but it seems like there are millions of wrestling podcasts out there. Yeah. Everybody wants to start one. Probably over not a thousand can, for sure. Yeah, not everybody can be successful at it. And thank you very much for all of it. No, thank you, man. I'm having a blast and I'm glad that in some small way, this silly ass show resulted in you getting back in wrestling where you belong. Yeah. Like the idea that you know, Sting's last run, you wouldn't have been the voice of that. That just doesn't seem right. And it made me really right. happy after the pay-per-view went off the air that he gave you a shout out, uh, and you were at the desk and he wanted you to come over and you hit everybody with the it Sting. It was, yeah, it was a that, special, that was moment, special man. moment for me. Yeah. Yeah. And I was not going to climb in the ring. It's his ring. And, uh, but yeah, that meant a lot to me too. It did. So that's, you know what? We go back now. We, we, I think there was a question earlier. What's your favorite moment of sting? Maybe that is be able to be called over by sting at the very end of the night. Um, wonderful. It's a wonderful, but it doesn't, uh, Cover up the fact that we're full of shit because we are in a good way. Oh, the man that ruled the world. Dude, what a look. Now, of course, the reminder here is they're getting ready for war games and right. we're going to have Sting on one side. He's going to be on the other. Of course, Sting's going to need a partner. There's going to be none other than the shock master. Uh, and then we know that eventually we were supposed to see Vader yeah. and Sid for the WCW title, not the NWA title that flair sporting with the big gold belt that he just won from Barry Windham at beach blast, which is, I believe his 10th title win. Instead, he is going to, uh, be wrestling Vader in the main event of Starcade because Sid is unavailable because he got himself fired for stabbing Arn Anderson in a hotel over the, uh, across the pond. Pretty crazy to think all that was happening here in 1993. Is it not crazy? And now Sid has come out for those of you. That's why I said the man that rules the world. For those of you not watching on video, uh, Sid Vicious should come out. And I believe Conrad, he's talking right now. I think he's doing commentary. Let's listen. Right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll go on the record and say, if Nature Boy wins this, it's going to send Stinger down and Big Sid's probably next to I am line. begging, I am begging for the winner of this match. All right, well, there's a challenge. Yeah, Sid has joined you yeah. and Jesse on commentary, and those kids, man, they're with Sting. They're hooting and hollering in the background. Yeah. They are. That's one of the things I really liked about Sting matches in this era. You could hear the kids screaming. I mean, he's yeah. their hero. He's their Hulk Hogan. Sure. Right. Nick well, Patrick he's our really Hulk. getting he, in there. He's our Hulk Hogan. That's exactly right. right. Well said. And when I say our, I was talking about the promotions Hulk Hogan. Yes. Ain't going to be another one like him. I'm glad we're getting to uh, celebrate him one last time here on what happened when. Right. I say that, but, you know, of course, we're going to continue to watch old school wrestling. And I'm sure Sting will be in many things we watch in the future, but. You know, we've been talking about Sting's last match for months at this point, and I guess this will be the the last in-depth conversation about it, and we'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming, and we want to hear from you guys. We're going to be running some polls over on YouTube this week to see what you want us to watch next, so be sure to go vote in those polls right now. The only place to vote in the polls is our YouTube. That's WHW on YouTube.com. WHW on YouTube.com is where you can find it. And, uh, we're going to have some guests in the future again, and we're not doing a guest driven format every week, but, uh, every now yeah. and again, we have some mm -hmm. fun ideas and, and I had a decent idea. I thought over the last week or so, and you said, Hey, let's work on that. So I think you're going to work on that in the next couple of weeks. And we'll that's have... been confirmed by the way. We oh, great. Work it out. Yeah. Great. And also, uh, because of the reach of our podcast, uh, especially within the wrestling community itself. Uh, we've had, a, I've had a number of people reach out to me and say, Hey, I'd like to join you and Conrad on your podcast. It was so fun, man. I, I ran into uh, orange Cassidy in Huntsville 
Yeah. And, uh, we caught up and, and very quickly he goes, Hey man, let me know when we're going to watch that FMW match with Mike. Awesome. I thought mm-hmm. that was kind of fun. And that's what this yeah. show was really all about and has been for several years. Just friends, busting balls, watching old wrestling together, friends, watching wrestling. And we're glad that you're our friend watching wrestling with us as we're celebrating things. Last match, at least a, a few more minutes here as he and Rick are winding it down in a, a 40 minute match that has fans on their feet here at center stage. It's hard to believe this was 31 years ago, Tony. Blows me away. Again, the kids here are in their forties. Yes. Right. Most. Yes. I mean, there's a lot of people in that crowd right now who are dead. Yes. Including pretty soon my career from that. Now the big figure four leg lock and flair almost pinned himself. Boy, flair could sell it. Couldn't he? Yeah. Taking the blonde hair and going, Oh God. Oh God. Flair. <laughs> He's in your family, dude. Oh. By marriage. Come on now. <laughs> oh. I couldn't imagine he being my father in law. Oh God. If he if Flair was my father in law when the phone rang and I saw his name pop up, I'd fucking run. Things face paint wears right off, which is a a normal thing back then. Okay, uh, let me get to the move that that Lois has named. Okay, I thought it was I thought it was freaking classic, and I thought you would love it, and I immediately popped. So you know how they'll they'll drag. They'll go outside. One will be out. One will be in and they'll drag them to the, the ring post. Right. And they'll, they'll, uh, spread their legs with the ring post between their legs and pull on it. Right. Yep. Okay. Lois said, Oh, he hit him with the dick remover. Oh gosh. And I went, you just named a move. Yes. I said, if I could, I would say he hit him with the dick remover on TV. But that's what she called it. And she could she called it like, oh, he hit him with a dick remover. Thank you. Great call, lady. Dude, the so maybe dick. there's maybe there's some potential for her uh still. Maybe that's what we need to do is we need to have her join join us every now and again. And call a match. Yeah, I'll lay out and you do play by play and she does color. Yeah. That'd be great. You, we would hear her say, what should I say now? Huh? Was that okay? <laughs> what should I say now? Uh. Before, so anyway, she, before she became the- uh, full-time taking care of you and, and a house full of Shivani's, uh-huh. what, what was Lois's uh, profession? What, during this era? Like, at all. Like, I don't know what Lois's work history was. I don't know what she used to do for a little oh. Okay, she uh, was working at a radio station when I met her. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, working on logs. She went to work for a television station uh, after we got married. Didn't last long. Then she went to work. She was the the executive assistant for the dean of Greensboro College. Wow. And that that ended uh, badly. Uh, she got fired from that for telling her boss to. If he wants to file something, he better do it himself. Oh, she's had enough of him. Oh, so, I love and I her. I think that, that may have, I think that may have been her last job. She did some temp work, and that was basically throughout all the years she's we've been married. She's Flair goes down. What a move that was! They do a uh, a flying cross body into the ropes. They're supposed to uh, tumble over the ropes in that crucifix type position, or. Um, what have you. And then they can't get over. So sting gets it on the second effort. Flair pops up and immediately face plants. Oh, and here comes Sid. It's yeah. going to yank down sting into the guardrail. 
The referee missed it. Sid saying, no, I didn't do anything. Oh, and there's the count out. There it is. The nature boy. And Flair saying no. Ric Flair wins the match, but he, he jerked his hand down. He's pointing at Sid Vicious. I like it. So Flair is, is arguing. He doesn't want the win this way. He doesn't want to win by count out like that. And he's calling Sid in saying, come on, pal, let's go. And then on the other side, here they come. The Harlem heat before they were Stevie Ray and Booker T they were, were they cold and what do you recall? Oh God, no, I don't I have to look that up. I'm looking it up right now. Cause they did have names okay. before that. Yeah, they did. One called lash. Was that right? No, Cole and Kane. Cole and Kane. Okay. Isn't that crazy. Kane. The first cane, by God. <laughs> That's right. Glenn Jacobs, get your shit together. Absolutely. Okay. And here's the, oh. the, the match here. Look at, uh, look at the way you're dressed and the way Jesse, the body is dressed. Yeah. My goodness. Let's listen to this thing here. Short, I know it's Sid Vicious from Harlem. Heat getting the ball right there at the end. Well, it's obvious the nature boy is still all night long. That's right. The nature boy is 60 minutes all night long. Took the stinger to the limit one more time. Only thing is, Sid, you took a little piece of my heart. You took a little piece of the gold, and I mean the NWA title that I might have had. Sid Vicious, you bring Harlem Heat, you bring your buddies. I don't care who you bring, because the simple fact of the matter is, punk. I beat up punks, and you're one of the biggest punks around. You know, if you got the Dallas Cowboys and the Buffalo Bills playing for the Super Bowl, you don't want these punk fans running out in the field in the middle of the game. And you know what? Sting hit it right, Vicious. You and the Harlem Heat are three punks. Next week, right here, head up. Woo! All right, the challenge has been made to Sid Vicious and Harlem Heat from Ric Flair and Sting, and what a classic. So there you go. Sting's last match that we're going to be watching here where we would discuss Sting's last match. I suppose we watched not one, not two, but three great sting matches. Maybe perhaps no coincidence, two of the three against the nature boy, Ric Flair. What a career man. And it's coming to an end here. And, uh, if you're looking to come to the end of your credit card debt, man, call your friend in the mortgage business, 888-425-0105. Or check me out at savewithconrad.com. You can even slide my emails, conrad at savewithconrad.com. Love to help you save some money, get a lower monthly payment, skip your next two house payments, and it all happens at savewithconrad.com. But Tony, right now, it looks like it's about that time. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is Dave Silva in the ring, Conrad Thompson on the outside. Conrad has Dave by the legs. He's pulling him towards the ring pose. No! He hit him with a dick remover. Wait a minute. We know that's not right because Dave has no dick. We're desperately out of time. We'll see you next week on What Happened When. We come to you each and every Wednesday on Cumulus Westwood One. But Mondays, we come to you ad-free only on Patron. Patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. And, of course, adfreeshows.com.